Hello everybody and welcome back to the Daybound SMP server. So we're starting off today just on this nice little custom hill built here. Nothing too suspicious going on, but if we come down here, we'll find this button, which will reveal this secret doorway to get under the hill. Then if we come down this staircase and take a right, we will come down into the Hall of Bounders. So this is just a little place where the Bounders can go and build a little statue or a little wall carving of themselves here. And as you can see here, Sassyfish and Sev have went with the full bodied 3D look, whereas Marks has went for the wall carving of his face using just a sort of stone and darker stone texture. Very cool. Then if we come down here, we can see Obney's went for something a little bit more colourful and a sort of mixture of both with the 3D coming out with his mouth and tusks here. So I'm going to place myself over here beside Marks so we can get some more stuff going on this side. And I've decided to go with the same theme as Sev and Sassyfish. Because I felt that worked best for myself. But let me get this built and I will show you it when it is all finished. So you need to let me know in the comments how you think I've done. I think I've done a pretty good job at getting the skin matching. As you can see I've used the nether rack and the quartz saw to sort of be like a bit of exposed bone and flesh. Because I am a zombified doom guy. And I've also got the smashed visor and the mask up at the top there. But yeah I'm really happy with how it turned out. I tried to squeeze as much detail as I could into it just to match the skin. So you can see in the corners I've got the shoulder pads made out of leather, we've got the little bits of leather sticking out there. And then I've decided to do a bit of a sort of hellscape on the floor, just again, going with the same sort of style that Sassy Fish and Sever went with decorating that. So, got some lather, I've got some redstone to be like blood, and that's dripping from what is a sword. Now, I know it doesn't look entirely like a sword, but it's the closest thing I could do. And you might be like, Doom, doesn't the Doom guy typically use guns, shotguns, BFGs, more things of that nature? Yes, but that was incredibly hard to make in this sort of small frame. And I was very envious of Sassy and Sev holding something, so I wanted to hold something too. And what better than a big massive saw? Now this should probably be the part of the video where we're back at base explaining what's going to be the big project for today. But I thought I would stop by the shopping district just to see if I've made any more diamonds over at Vice Kings. And well, there's been a little bit of an update to the shopping district. So if you follow me on Twitter, and if you don't, there's a link in the description below where you can rectify that problem. But if you follow me on Twitter, you might have seen I posted some screenshots from the Vice Kings Ice and Snow shop that we built a couple videos ago. And I had a little reply to that tweet from Hoodie saying that it looked like it was missing something. And well, his ominous message has brought us something absolutely amazing. This. The official Vice Kings advertisement. It's like a big 3D billboard and this little statue of a viking me looks absolutely amazing. And it's very fitting considering what we've just built over at Daybound Village. So, Hoodie, I have to say, hats off to you. This, just like all of the other little statues you've been adding to the server, looks fantastic. And I love it so, so, so much. And I've also just noticed he's used our little flag and banner design up at the top on the sails, which is just... 10 out of 10 hoodie, fantastic. And I even love the big axe made out of the ice and snow. It fits in perfectly. And I mean, how does this not draw your eye over to a shop? Look, if we come out of the portal, yeah, that's perfect. And I don't know about the eyes, or it's meant to be the recreation of the smashed visor, but it sort of makes us look like we're a, a mad viking, which I think I love a little bit more than the smashed visor. So good call with that hoodie. But I did have a plan for this bit of the shopping district. I spoke with Marks about turning this into a little sort of seating or pond area. And I think this will fit in pretty well with that. We've got a nice big center piece. So what I'm thinking is I may build up the dirt a little bit around here. Or I might do some terraforming and dig it down. Then I'm thinking of putting some water at the roof here. Going down into the pond. So it's like the side of the roof is melted and all the water's trickling down into that. And surrounding the ice with the water would look cool as well. At least I think it would look cool. And it would also highlight Hoodie's lovely, lovely design and sort of billboard he's made for us. So thank you very much for that Hoodie. And also I might be stealing this design because I've got a project coming up that I think this would fit in with perfectly. Or I might even speak with Hoodie and see if he could add this and possibly add something else. Because it is quite a big project, and having a little bit of a helping hand on it would be very, very helpful and save a lot of time. But I'm going to keep that hush-hush 
for now. But before we head back to base, let's have a little look, see if we have made any more diamonds. So nothing in here, nothing in here, and I've just noticed this on the wall. Now that's one cool shot, chop chop, 10 out of 10. Thank you very much for the lovely review, Chop Chop, and if we make sure that no one else leaves a review, we're guaranteed a 10 out of 10 rating forever. Nothing in here, no buckets of snow, I think Marks has almost finished this project, or he has finished it by now, so I don't know if we'll sell too much of a puddled snow. But I did add some more diamonds over here, just between the last video, so we've got 25 more diamonds, and a little bucket drop off by a mark, so... You can fill that up as well, just in case anyone else wants some powdered snow. Ah, home sweet home. So now that we're back at base, we can discuss what we're going to be doing in this video for our big project. But we're going to be continuing on with the theme from our last video, where we're going to build another building like these two to hold some redstone farms, as well as some other stuff. But it's going to be over in this area, and this building is going to hold five redstone farms to be exact. Now you might be like, Doom, why is it going to hold five redstone farms in a single building? You could make a bunch of little different buildings. Well, if you haven't noticed already, I build very big because I just apparently am totally incapable of building small, so there's a lot of interior space for us to fill. And point number two is four of the five farms are going to be very small because I don't need a lot of the materials that they're going to produce. It's, they're just basically a nice thing to have. So, so let me add in the redstone for the first farm that we're going to be adding. And the first farm that we're going to be adding in is this sheep farm. Now this design I've been using for as long as I can remember. And the way it works is the sheep eats the grass, which grows its fall, pulls this observer, pulls the redstone, pulls the dispenser, which then shears the sheep. And I can show you like this. So we shear the sheep like that. And there we've seen it. So the sheep ate the grass, grew its fur, and then was instantly cut off. Then if we look in this little barrel here, it collects all of the wool. So to do that, I've got a hopper main cut stuck inside of the block there. Feeds it into a hopper, then into the barrel. Then this barrel here is just for a bit of excess storage, just in case we're getting a lot of wool from a particular colour of sheep. Now, I'm not going to just stop with this one colour of sheep. I want to have the full colours of sheep going all the way down. So let me get those ones added as well. Surprisingly, moving the sheep over here was one of the more easier things to do. I think the most time consuming thing ended up being filling up all of the spencers with shears. But as you can see, we've got all of the sheep here, we've got all of the different colours, and you would be able to see that if they weren't currently sheared. But if you look through the barrows, we can see everything quickly. So now that that's done, I'm going to come over to this side and I'm going to add in the rest of the farms. Ta-da! The final four farms are all finished, so let's have a look starting from down this side. So this is a little sea pickle farm that I got from following a tutorial by Abfielder on YouTube. Sorry if I butchered your name, but I'll leave a link to that tutorial in the description below. And this is actually the first time that I have ever built a sea pickle farm, but it's quick and easy to get set up, and I use sea pickles not just for dye, but I like to use them for decorations as little cups as well. Then next to that we have this little bamboo farm, this is using the exact same redstone setup as we got previously for our sugarcane farm over there. Then next to that we have this little two tall flower farm, what you do is you put two tall flower here, gets bone milled, falls off and gets put in the barrel getting picked up by a hopper main cart in that block. And this design was from YouTuber Eagle Eye 621 again I'll leave that linked in the description below. Then to the right of that we have this little melon and pumpkin farm. I don't think I'm going to use too many melons and pumpkins, but I thought it would be nice to have just in case. And this was a little redstone design I came up with myself. Is it a complete original design? Most likely not. Is it the most efficient farm? Definitely not. And then next to that I have this little two composter set up here, so be able just to compost things a lot faster and get some bone meal there. And as well as that, I also developed a deep, deep hatred for this hole because I fell in this way too many times than I would like to admit. But now that we've got all of the farms up and running, the only thing that we've got left to do is get the barn built and get the interior fully finished. So let's do that now.
I told you it was going to be a big burn. But I've done a couple of extra things off camera, so the first thing I did was I raised the ground up around the show line here just to give us a bit more space outside the front of the barn, especially because this walkway takes up a bit of space. I wanted to make sure we could add in a path and maybe even do a little bit of a fence or a wall here just to make sure no one falls into the water. Then coming around the left hand side here, I've added something that some people might think is a little bit morbid, but I think it fits the theme very nicely. So I've added in a little butcher station and we have some chickens and some cages. I have a cow tied up because we're going to look after it and love it, nothing else. And over here we've got some hanging flesh which is starting to rot a little, but we can chop that off with our axe. Then we've got some blood on the floor, a little bit of blood on the wall and some leather. Then over at the back I've added this platform just to give us some more detail at the back so it's not plain boring wall. And this has just got some chests, some barrels and some hay. So Basically just like little bits of excess materials and storage for the barn. And of course we've got a big window so we can see inside and outside. Now over at the right hand side we have this little extra section here. So I'll leave a link to the inspiration for the barn in the description below where you can see this. So this bit connects with the ground and goes all the way up to the roof there. And I thought this little section would be the perfect place to move our cows in. It's a lot more cosy than them being trapped outside in that little pen up beside the house back there. Then I've added some more details in here, so we've got a little bit of wood, some water here and some cauldrons, hay bales for them to eat, and this is just to act as little bits of fallen hay. And if you don't know about this trick with the coral, if you waterlog a block, you can place a coral on it and it won't lose its colour. Now they probably could eat the roof, but we're going to pretend that they won't and they're going to be some very, very well behaved cows. And over on this barrel we've got our sword for harvesting our meat and leather, and some wheat to breed them up. So let's have a look at the interior of the farm, shall we? So we come in here, we've got this nice big doorway here and the first thing you may notice is that I've added some walls to the sides of all the farms just to make them look a bit more structurally sound. Then above each of the sheep, I've added in the colour of wool that signifies what colour of sheep is in there. Then I've also moved over the wool from our house here just to give us some more storage space in the house because I am surprisingly running out of it very, very quickly. Then to detail the floor, I've added in some stairs just makes it look like it's a bit more used and warm. I've added in some water, so it's like some spillages and things like that. And then some dead coral just for a bit of dirt and debris. Just to give the barn that really sort of lived in and used look and feel. Then for the farms here, you can see I've added in some lighting. Make sure everything's got enough light to grow. I've also added in things like water just to make sure that the ground is nice and fertilised. And you can see we're already collecting up some pumpkins, melons and some bamboo. And we don't have any sea pickles or flowers because I've not run those farms at all. Then if we come down here, you can see I've got two doorways to get in at the back. And if we can actually walk through the door, I've added in some extra barrels and some beehives. This is just so when you're looking through the window, it's a bit more visually appealing than just a whole bunch of exposed redstone. Then I've got some hay bales, some lights, just to help light up the place. Then I've carried over the floor design in here as well, just to give it that used and looked in. Then back here, I've just kept this all grass pretty plain and simple. I want to make sure that we've always got the possibility for the grass under the sheep. To grow back so I think we've got more than enough here to worry about that. Then up at the top I've added in this platform section up here and I've also added in this little bit of detail that I really like. So I was imagining a little sort of hand used pulley system so we've got the upside down piston as our counterweight and we're using that to help bring up some hay up to the platform that we're going to store. Then I've got some andesite stairs with the chains and the signs are basically just like these are like little nails I've tried to go for. But if I come up the ladder here, we can see this. I'm not using it for anything in particular, but as I said, we could use it for some excess storage if I've ever run out of the storage down there. And I've just done some things like added some kelp and some campfires for some detail. Custom made barrows with the butt strap doors, some leaves and moss, just this is basically little bits of leaves and dirt that we've harvested from things. Dried kelp blocks, some bits of wood here, some plants and flowers and lanterns. Then in the ceiling I've added in some cobwebs and pointed dripstone just to, again to go for some dirt and debris. Over here I've got a little bit of pile of dirt and mud here. Then again this is just some excess materials, some hay, some stacked up leaf blocks, then a cauldron with some water. But yeah I'm super happy with how the barns turned out. I think I've done a good job if I do say so myself at using up all of the space available to us. But if there's anything you think I should add that I've missed please leave a comment below. Your input on things like that is always welcomed and it's very encouraged. But one thing I will share with you was I was going to use this up here as another little 
sort of home living space for some villagers. But the doorway up here had me a little bit worried in case they wandered out here and got themselves killed. So I think I'll leave this as a villager free zone for the moment. And I think with everything we've got anyway, it's probably more than enough things in the barn. Now before we finish off today's video, there's an issue that I must address. So if you look behind me, you can see we've got all these nice big buildings, they're all fully interior details, all of the buildings serve a purpose, they're useful, they've got a job to do. Some of them have got multiple jobs. But our little area is missing something that just gives it a lot of life and a lot of character, and that is the external details, so things going on around outside of the buildings. Now this is something that I always neglect as a Minecraft player, and it's something I want to get good at. So I'm thinking in today's video we're going to make a little start to that, nothing too drastic or severe, just something to help kick us off and get us in that right headspace. And the first thing that I'm going to do is add a little path going from our house and connecting up to both of these buildings. And adding in the path will give us a nice little walkway around the village, especially when we're adding more buildings, we can expand that out as we go. And it'll also let me put in some lights finally to light up the area. Because I should probably not admit this, but the front of the house has actually been blown up by a creeper a number of times. It is more than one, it is more than three, it's probably about five or six. And the barn may or may not have had that happen already, but we'll gloss over that fact. So let me add in this path and lights and you can let me know what you think. Yeah, I think that definitely looks a lot better, especially if we compare it to over here. Just it looks a lot more lively and lived in. So let's go have a look and see what I've done for the path. So for the path, I didn't want to do anything sort of too fancy or quote unquote advanced. So I've kept it just to three way design and for the block choice, I went for cobblestone, stone, andesite and tough. Then for a bit more detail, I've added in these stone buttons here. So these are like little bits of debris, maybe to give the impression that the path's sort of breaking up or at least some of the blocks are breaking up and kicking out these little bits of the blocks. Then around the edges, I've also built up the snow a little bit and brought some of the snow onto the path just for some more detail. I think maybe going around and building up the snow like this, maybe we can do some like walls or like clumps of snow, things like that. I think that could add a little bit of nice character to around the area, but I want to give that a try and see. Then for the lights, I went with a cobblestone deep slate wall at the bottom, dark oak fences at the top, then I went for a hopper and a campfire design. I think having the open flame for these lights, because we want them to be sort of like big street lights, works a lot better than going with the lanterns and also just gives us a nice change from using the lanterns everywhere. And also underneath the lights I've added in some diorite blocks, I wanted to give this impression that the snow directly underneath the light has melted just due to the heat, then it's mixed in with the stone and giving it that sort of really dirty, wet, sort of slushy snow look underneath and just mixing in with all the dirt from the rock. Well, that's going to do it for this video, so thank you very much for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, be sure to like and subscribe for more Minecraft content in the future. And if you'd like even more Minecraft content from myself, be sure to check out all of my social media links in the description down below. And now on your screen to your left, you can see the previous episode from the Daybound SMP server, as well as a video that YouTube thinks you would enjoy. And until next time, I'll see you later. Bye.